welcome to Caleb's Trains. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Lionel Legacy Russian Decapod. Right here. This one that we got is Frisco 1630. Uh, it's a very nice model. Lionel, I think Lionel did a great job on this model. Um, there are tons of great features on this locomotive, as well as detail. It's very highly detailed. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at all the features and details on this locomotive. So make sure you smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, smash the notification bell so you don't miss any of our awesome videos. Smash the comment button if you wanna ask us or tell us something. It's down there, go find it. Uh, make sure to share this video with others so we can keep our channel growing. And finally, make sure to follow us on Instagram right here at Caleb's underscore trains. Anyways, with all that said, Let's take a look at this locomotive and let's do a review on it. And uh, yeah, happy railroading. All right, so here it is. This is the Legacy Lionel Frisco 1630. Right here I have the box 2331310 Frisco Legacy Russian Decapod number 1630. This locomotive is very highly detailed. So let's go ahead and have a look at it, starting with the front. So up front here, we have a nice pilot right here, as well as your dummy coupler. Then you have these air brake hoses up, up front. And then right here, you have your air tanks below the headlight, as well as some nice separately applied um, grab irons and handrails. Right here is your headlight. And below that is the number plate and your two number boards on either side. Above that, you have your bell and these two marker lights, which are like your standard locomotives, are bicolor classification lights. So they can change from either white, green, or off, which is very cool. And I will showcase that later in the video. Moving down the side of the locomotive, we have more nice separately applied handrails going all the way down the boiler, as well as nice um, separately applied sand um, pipes from the sand dome right here to go to all the wheels on the real locomotive. And there's just a whole lot of separately applied pipe detail everywhere. Like everywhere you look, there's, there's a lot of it. This locomotive has a lot of it. Then here, these two, um, Valves, red hand-painted valves. Those are very nice. Moving down the locomotive, you have your um, cylinders right here with um, your uh, some nice separately applied piping detail. Moving down the locomotive, here we have our drive gear, which is very nicely detailed, as well as nice um, brakes in the background. Kind of hard to see, but they're there. They do look very nice. Moving down to the firebox, uh, it's very nicely detailed, lots of rivet detail here on the firebox as well as the ash pan. Uh, not much to see here, but it is still pretty cool. Moving up to the cab, you have a nice and crisp Frisco as well as nice rivet detail all on the cab. Inside the cab, there are two hand painted figures, which I will get a better view of those in a minute after we finish uh, looking at this locomotive. So now let's go ahead and move to the top right here. You have your smokestack here, like I said earlier, is your sand dome with a nice separately applied grab iron on the side. Here is your steam dome, which has a nice rope going to it here and um, hand painted red valve right there. Moving down, you have your steam dynamo, as well as your whistles, or whistle. These two are your pop-off valves, and that's your whistle, I think. And then finally, right here on top of the cab, you have a nice vent. And uh, I think that's pretty cool, so I'm going to leave it open. I like it. It looks better when it's open. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cab now. And then after the cab, we'll go ahead and look at the tender. So we'll be right back. All right, so here we go. I have the cab exposed and there is a lot of hand painted red valves inside as well as a lot of separately applied piping detail. 
around the firebox and actually really everywhere inside the cab. This is very highly detailed. Uh, here you have two windows on either side here. And then you have some separately applied grab irons for the crew to be able to get into the cab. And one last thing, this locomotive has a drop plate from the engine to the tender. So I think that is very cool. Because um, not many legacy locomotives actually have a drop plate. So I thought it was very cool that this locomotive had it. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the cab and the locomotive. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tender. Okay, so here we have uh, the tender. And let's go ahead and start off with the front. There's really not much here. It's just your tether and these molded in um, door details to get to the coal load. So uh, yeah, that, that's about it for the front. Uh, here on the side, Right here you have a nice separately applied handrail. It's kind of hard to see. I guess you have to go back to the front. But you can kind of see it a little better. And um, lots of nice rivet detail everywhere on the, on the tender. And a nice crisp 1630 right in the middle of the tender. Moving down, we have tons of nice chain detail on, on the bottom near the trucks on this locomotive. And uh, speaking of the trucks, they are very highly detailed. They look great, I think. So let's go ahead and move to the back here. Here we have a, oh, that was my finger. Uh, right here we have a nice separately applied ladder as well as a nice crisp 1630. Above that, there's a separately applied handrail Right here is your coupler cup bar and your electro coupler. And we're gonna move to the top now. Right here you have your um, backup light with two number boards on either side that say 1630. Right here you have your uh, water hatch, which when you open it reveals your master controls, run programs, smoke on and off, all that good stuff. Right here, you have your doghouse, which I think is so awesome. There's even a crew figure in there, and it lights up when the train is moving. That is so cool. I love it so much. There's even like a shade on the side of the window, and, uh, and two separately applied um, grab irons on the top of the doghouse. So that's really cool. Up top here, we have our coal load, which is, this is all real coal, so very realistic looking. And uh, yeah, that, that pretty much wraps it up for the tender. So let's go ahead and put the tender back together with the locomotive. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and fire it up and hear the sounds on this locomotive. All right, so now I've got power to the track. Let's go ahead and uh, start this locomotive up. That's a Roger. 20 pound reduction given. Checking for leakage. Over. Roger. Showing 20 pounds. Welcome to the train. Break me down. Very cool. Extended startup. Uh, there we go. There's our there's our smoke unit already going. Um, so like I was talking about up front here for your bicolor classification lights, um, you just. Um, you just uh, do like that, and then they're, now they're green, now they're white, and now they're off. And I, I like them white. Sometimes I turn them green, but I think they look really cool when they're white. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and hear the whistle. So this locomotive, um, if you didn't know, uh, Lionel actually went out to the Illinois Railroad Museum 
and recorded the sounds from the real 1630. And um, the whistle was part of that, and that's why it, I think it. I think it sounds great. So let's go ahead and see whistle number two, or hear whistle number two. That's actually a pretty cool whistle. I, I actually really like it. Let's see whistle number three. a very cool whistle as well. Let's go to whistle number four. You already know my opinion on this whistle. I love it. All right, whistle number five. That is the Strasburg 90s whistle. I think it's pretty cool. The two, the whistles of the two uh, running decapods are on this locomotive. This one, and this one. That's pretty cool. So um, let's go ahead and hear the bells. That one's my favorite, the first one. It's the real one of this whistle, the one that they actually recorded the sounds from. So let's go ahead and hear some crew talk. I do really like that sound effect of the emptying of the ash pans. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, run it a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and hook it up to a, a local freight and run it around the layout a few times. So, uh, yeah, let's go. We'll start off going backwards a little bit. As you can see, that's your backup light. There's the doghouse. This locomotive, just like our, um, our uh, Dreyfus Hudson, which if you didn't go watch the review on that video, you definitely go should after watching this one. Um, this is, it's a, this is a great smoking locomotive. I mean, I don't know if you can see it that well on the camera, but it is smoking quite a lot, actually. It's, a it's a great locomotive all around. I, um, this is one of my favorite locomotives, actually. It's, uh, it's very cool. Let's go ahead and move it right here. All right, so now let's go ahead and hook it up to a little freight and run around the layout a few times. So um, thanks for watching. Happy railroading.
Trail Train number one. 